Hi everybody, in this video I want to do a quick walkthrough of the app that you will use in your lab to um, test out getting app permissions and also getting the location. Uh, sorry it took so long to get this up, I ran into every technical difficulty including someone running over our power pole uh, that you can imagine, so that's why it's a little late. Um, anyway. So if you go to your, uh, the module for today, you'll see a lab for uh, where am I? And that is the name of our app that we're gonna play around with. So in this lab, I give you all the code. I just want you to be able to kind of walk through it, maybe understand it, um, and then later, if you so choose, apply it in your project. Um, I'm gonna first grab a copy of the project because I at least want you to play around with this app and appreciate how it works. Okay, so there's a GitHub project. Um, it's public access. You can go download a copy of it. So I'm going to grab it and walk through the process of setting it up. Uh, whoops. So I'm going to check out a project from version control and paste in the GitHub address that is in the uh, lab. All right. So Android Studio has imported it for me. Thank you, Mr. Studio make this a little bit bigger. All right, so um, Gradle is building this right now, so it's gonna take a second before this all lines up. Um, in the meantime, let's kind of take a look here. Uh, go and find the Android manifest, uh, because you're gonna need it in a second. Um, and is Gradle almost done? Looks like it, okay starting to look finished anyway. It's doing its indexing thing. All right, in this app, there's only, there's a couple of activities um, and we'll, we'll go through each of them in a minute. Let me just try and run the app though because I wanna show you something that you will probably encounter or have encountered already. So I tried to run the app and it gave me a build failure with exception. And that exception is Google services.json is missing. Hmm, well, what does that tell you? Well, it tells you Google services.json is missing, but it also tells you that this app is using some Google service and probably Firebase, right? So in fact, this app does use Firebase because we are going to be recording location in it and saving it up into the Cloud Firestore. So let's go set up our Firebase project to deal with this. Um, here I am in the Firebase console. You can uh, use an existing project if you would like I don't recommend using your like semester project, uh, but if you have like the Firebase authentication example project still there, feel free to use it. Uh, or you can make a new project, it's up to you. I'm going to use this existing project I have uh, that I use for a bunch of demos. And so what you need to do is add, authorize this application to access this Firebase project. So we're gonna click on add app and then we'll go over here to the Android icon, click on it. Okay, register the app, Android package name. So this has to be precise. Um, so let's go back to our code. In the package name it is looking for, I'm here in uh, the Android manifest, and this is the package name. So this thing, whatever this value is, that's what you gotta put in that box. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it. It's edu.uncw.whereami. Uh, the rest of this you leave blank. Register the app. It's going to think for a second. All right, and now it has produced for us the Google services.json file. So even if you are using this with an existing project, you still need to do this step and you definitely need to re download this Google services.json file. Um, if you have an old version of the file on your disk somewhere, you can't just copy it in. You got to get this new version. All right, so let me go grab this file. I gotta get it off my other screen here. I pick it up and I'm gonna plop it, paste it into my where am I slash app folder. All right, so now if we go to um, run this thing, we should have a little bit more luck. Okay, I've already got my emulator up and it looks like I've gotten past the uh, error that I had before, so that's a good thing. Um, take just a second to build on my uh, very modern computer. In the meantime, let's take just a quick look in the Java here. Um, 
Oh, that wasn't so bad. So there's only three activities in this app uh, that I want you to kind of poke through and get familiar with. The first is the main activity, and it's just this screen here. It doesn't actually do much beyond that. It just launches new activities. Um, now let's check out the on-demand activity. So if you click the button in the emulator that says, or on your phone, you can run this on your phone too, no worries. Click the on-demand button, um, and you'll see an activity that looks like this. So I already have some data here. Your data will be blank, and that's okay. That's expected. Um, this, uh, this activity is going to demonstrate getting a location like on demand when the user, say, presses a button or submits a post or anything like that, right? It responds to an event. It's a one-time recording, like just tell me where the last known location is, okay? So in the code, the code is actually, there's, there's a fair amount to it. Um, a lot of it is setting up this recycler view down here to kind of listen and get the, the records as they're saved to the Firestore. And some of this code is saving to the Firestore, which you already know how to do. Uh, interestingly, the Firestore has a built-in data type for um, latitude and longitude. It's called a geo point, right? And it just wraps up the latitude and longitude inside a little class for you. Um, the code to actually get the location, um, you've got to go through a process of requesting permission, checking for permission uh, to get the location. Uh, if the user hasn't granted location permission, you have to ask for it. Once you have it, then you can finally make a call to say, hey, Android operating system, Google libraries, tell me the last known location. And then that's an asynchronous call and it comes back with a success listener or a fail listener. And then you do something updating your UI or recording to the database. Um, I've got it in both the lab uh, page here and a lot of detailed comments in here to kind of help walk you through it. Um, I'm not asking you to do anything more than to try and poke at this and understand it because uh, later in your project you will probably or possibly be, you know, uh, adapting this for your code and you'll learn a lot through that process. But anyway, let's record the location. Okay. So when I click record location in my app, what do you see? This is the standard kind of Android baked in dialog for requesting permissions. Uh, this dialog box is not specified in my code. My code makes a call to Android that launches this dialog box, but I'm not specifying the layout of this thing or anything. It's a separate entity, right? It's kind of happening, happening at the operating system level. Um, if you do something here like click deny, okay? So you get a little toast that says your app won't work until you grant permission. But then if you click it again, it doesn't prompt you again, like for the settings, right, to, to allow permission. And that's kind of by design of Android. Android makes it really hard that once someone denies permission for you to keep pestering them for it. There are ways around that, um, but it's not good practice. It's not pleasant to your users. What you should do, or what I should do here, is give a little bit more information on, hey, you've already denied location access. Here's how you can turn it on for me if you want to. Let me show you how to do that. Um, whether you're on your phone or in your emulator, you want to pull up the settings application. Okay. If you pull up settings, let's see here, uh, somewhere you'll have an option that looks like apps. Okay, and you click on apps. And then there's permissions in the permission manager, okay? So your goal is to get to this permission manager. In this thing, everything is organized by uh, the type of permission. So body sensors, calendar, call logs, apps that can get to your camera, apps that can access your location. That's what we're interested in. So if I click on it, you can kind of scroll down and here's all the people who are allowed to access it. Um, and then here's everybody who's been denied access. And here's my app. So I can click on this and now change it here. Okay, uh, This is the way to do it through the system settings once the user has denied it. Of course, if they accept the permission whenever it comes up, great, you're good to go. Let me click record location now. I'm back in my app. And here it pulled the location off the phone. Um, 
what's happening behind the scenes is it's pulling this information, it's asking the phone and the Google services, what's the last known location of this device? It gets the data back, then it uploads a record to the Fire Store, okay? and then the Fire Store, this recycler view is listening to changes in the Fire Store and it updates. So there's actually a lot of transmission going on here. Now you'll notice, of course, as I'm clicking record location here, uh, a lot of these locations are the same. Uh, and that's of course because the emulator isn't moving. Uh, if you were to do this on your device, you would see different locations as the location fix just makes little random noise movements. But you can change the location of the emulator. So click the three little dots in the emulator menu right here and you'll get uh, a menu that pops up for location, right? This is the emulator menu. One of the options over here is location. Um, they have like a Google map integrated here. So let's change this University of North Carolina, Wilmington, where none of us are allowed to be right now. Um, let's save this point. Okay. And now I'm going to click set location. Okay. All right. So the location has been set to here. Let me click record location. Let's see if these things change. Nope. They're still, still thinking it's there. Uh, not what I expected. Um, because as you can see here, the, the point is 34.22.39.7786, this thing, right? So it's in a different location. Let me go back, let's go back here, try and record location. No, it is still convinced it is there. So I'm thinking that maybe something's wrong with my emulator here. Um, but if you were to run this on your phone, uh, you actually would see, maybe let me change this. Try it again. Nope, still not updating. Something going wrong here with the emulator. Um, I think. Yeah, I'm not going to play around with it anymore. I'll try and figure out what's going on later. Um, so uh, anyway, this is the the code logic in here will work. The problem I'm having is with the emulator. I'm not sure what the problem with the emulator is. You've undoubtedly run into problems with the emulator yourself. Um, anyway, maybe you won't even have this bug. Let me go back over, uh, let me go back in my app. The other option is to record data continuously. And basically what happened, oh, here, this is the new location. So it was something about the way the, the location was being kept in that other activity. This is the new location here in the emulator. Um, so here you can see there's no record button. Whenever I launch this activity, it kind of fired off a background process, which again is all managed by Google. Um, that's gonna, you specify the criteria for when you want the location to update. Whoa, uh-oh, what happened? Well, when you get a crash like that, what do you do? Uh, you gotta go to the log cat. Let me get this out of uh, this mode for a second. We gotta see what happened. All right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No debuggable processes. That's because it's dead. Let's rerun this and see what happens. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Investigations. All right. Let's just wait and we'll let this run and see what happens. Maybe it, maybe it was a bug. Maybe it was a fluke. I doubt it. It should happen again. That's my guess. Um. Anyway, there we go. Oh. It, it's dead, but it's not telling me why it's dead. That is very interesting. Um, great. So this is a wonderful demo. Uh, I have no idea what's going on because this is not throwing an exception. It's just dying inexplicably. Uh, let's see if I stop. Is it maybe an error with Firebase? No, well, I think this is probably okay. Binding to service failed. Uploading is not possible. Um, my guess is what's going on here is that um, Firebase, okay, so this is, oh, here we go. Here's finally an exception. User recoverable, bad authentication. Ah, okay. So I do not have authentication baked into this where am I app right now. Um, long live credential is not available. Okay, so there's some little problem going on here with Firebase and authentication. I'll get this fixed up for you. Um, 
actually, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure why this is happening. Uh, <laughs> so we'll get this fixed up. Um, but what we'll see here is that the stuff is updating in the background, albeit um, it's working for a little while and then it's crashing out. Sometimes these errors can be due to the fact that you're running Firebase on the emulator and Firebase doesn't always like that. Um, all right, so anyway, it's updating. It's in the background. You can take a look at the code in uh, continuous loc activity, kind of see how this works. And hopefully you won't run into these issues like I did on the emulator. But anyway, have a look at the code, try it out. Let me know what you run into. Also try it on your phone, see how that works. Um, you should get some more exciting data out of that. All right, uh, take care and I'll see you next time.